Welcome to Black and White Cairo Ministries, where Christ is meeting you in a personal view. I'm Father John Roberts, and uh, this is the week after Easter. It's the first week in Easter, as a matter of fact. We are going to read from the Johannine Gospel, the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verse 19 to 31. So uh, let us begin. When it was evening in that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not filled with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails of, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading. I think that's one of the most popular stories that we have in the Bible is the one about doubting Thomas. I think every one of us has a sense that we need to touch and to taste and to hear and to smell something before we actually believe in it. So we have a lot that we share with Thomas. But let's back up a little bit. When we go into the section prior to the story of Thomas, we see Jesus entering into a closed room and he says, Peace, be still. My peace I leave with you. Every time we gather in church on Sunday and you hear the celebrant say the peace of the Lord be with you, he's recreating actually the sign at the very beginning in Genesis of creation in the world. As God breathed out upon the water, he breathed his peace and with his peace he actually created. So therefore when we offer peace to the world, we are actually co-creators with God. Thomas didn't know it, but he would become one of those co-creators along with the other disciples. But before he could, he had to have the proof. Have any of you been watching the uh, Bible series on the History Channel? If so, you join about 10 million other people who are also watching that same thing. And it came to um, a conclusion on Easter Sunday just a few days ago. And I remember um, how the producers did a fine job of having it to where when Jesus held up his hands, you could see right through them. You could see the opening where the nails had been set. Thomas touched those places on Jesus' hands, and from that he had the proof that he needed to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. What do we have today to be able to touch Christ and to know that he is present in our lives? Well, the good news is that he's starting to make his ascension, and when he makes that time come true, he's going to leave with us his Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that we are able to touch and we see in the lives of others that helps us understand that Jesus continues to remain as the Messiah. I hope and pray that you have had such encounters, that you have met the risen Lord and know Him because of His Holy Spirit. Like Thomas, he had to go on and he took up his cross and followed Christ and he sacrificed much of his own life so that others would understand truly who he was um, following. Each of you as Christians are called to be followers of Christ. And from that, you have a decision that you have to make each day. What proof do you have other than your faith? And the faith is belief in things known but not seen. God will continue to give you the strength and the power and the wisdom to overcome all your challenges. He will breathe upon you like he breathed upon the waters so that you may live and that you'll live abundantly. I hope and pray that today that you will find that strength and that courage in this message and that you will share with those like Thomas who say, Lord, let me just touch your hand so that I may believe. All these things were brought and manifest in the the man known as Jesus Christ and we'll continue until his 
glorious second coming to proclaim this message to the world. Be like Thomas. Touch the wounds of Christ. Allow Him to touch your wounds. And rejoice knowing that Jesus Christ is risen and His peace is with you. Amen. Where have there been moments in your life that you have been like Thomas? The question I have for you today is if you have had a moment where you were you felt like you were shut in, that you saw no hope, no way of getting out, share with the rest of the community here at Black and White Cairo Ministries moments where Christ touched you in a real and personal way to which you knew that He was really present in your lives. The second thing I'd like to um, ask of you for the talking point is how does the peace of God create? When you share that peace with others, how do you create? And thirdly, I think that we find this also in Holy Scripture is, are you able to share the life of Christ with others if there's just one person in the world that you cannot forgive? So in other words, is forgiveness necessary before there's peace? I trust that you will continue to contemplate the many mysteries of God and that you will think about these questions and that you'll respond to them. I look forward to hearing your answers and reading them here on Black and White Kyrie Ministries. Go forth in the name of Christ.